In this video, we will be looking at exam questions on the topic of programming constructs. Don't forget, if you like our videos, please hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up at the end of this video. It all helps promote my channel. So let's look at the exam question. Tick one box in each row to identify the programming construct used in the pseudocode examples below. So let's check it out. So we know from our previous learning that there are three programming constructs, sequence, selection, and iteration. So let's take each one of those one at a time. A sequence of events is very simple. It's do instruction number one, then instruction number two. A selection would be defined as following a test, do I perform one block of code or another block of code? Now, each block of code could be a single line of code or it could consist of multiple lines of code. An iteration, our third programming construct, some people call that loops. Yep. So in programming construct terms, it's known as iteration, which simply means perform one or more instruction multiple times. And there are two types of iteration we need to know about for our exams. We have count controlled iteration and condition controlled iteration. So let's look at some exam questions. So in the first pseudocode example, we have if the goal scored, then score is equal to score plus one. So what this is showing us is an if statement, which is calling a function. If the value of function is true or non-zero, then it will perform this line of code here, score equals score plus one. If this is false or zero, then score equals score plus one won't be performed. So we are selecting whether to execute this line of code or not based on whether this function here returns zero or not. So you can see here, I've selected the selection for the solution. Number two, we have a for loop. For loops are an example of a count controlled iteration because we know how many iterations it will definitely perform. In this case, we our initial value of the variable i is the value 10. Its closing condition is the value 15. And we will execute this print command printing the value of i, so it will print the value 10 through to 15. So this is obviously an example of an iteration. Number three. In the first line of code, we are taking an input. Because this is pseudocode, we are not casting into different data types, so we can ignore that. And then we, we are printing uh, a string literal of your age is, followed by uh, an additional print parameter of age. And again, because this is pseudocode, we don't have to worry about data types. So you can see we have to do the input line before we do the print line. Therefore, this is an example of a sequence. Number four. While timer is greater than zero, we're calling this subroutine play game. So this is a procedure called play game. We're not bothered about what play game does. That's not important in this question. It's just the fact that we are calling a subroutine. In this case, it's a procedure. And it will continue to iterate until timer 
is not greater than zero. So in other words, this will iterate while it is true. In other words, time is greater than zero. As soon as this condition is false, the loop will stop. So this is another example of iteration. We don't know the value of timer and therefore we don't know how long or how many iterations it will take for this expression to be false. So therefore this is a condition controlled loop which is an example of an iteration. The next example takes us into the use of a switch statement. Now switch statements are used where we have a situation where maybe three or more if statements are testing the same value. Instead of using if statements, we can simplify our code by using a switch statement. So let's look at this example. We're switching the variable day and if that variable contains the value six, we are printing the string literal today is Saturday. Seven, today is Sunday. We could have listed all seven days of the week. For simplicity's sake, I've just put the two weekend days in and every other value will default to a work day. So think of switch statements as the ability to simplify the use of multiple ifs. And generally, three or more if statements testing the same condition would warrant the use of a switch statement. So this is obviously an example of selection programming construct. In our final example, we have another for loop. But notice this time the initial condition starts with one and its final condition is 20 but it's going up in steps of two. So its initial value will be one. So this print command will print one. Then it will jump to three, then five and so on. So this is obviously an, another example of a count controlled iteration. So we've ticked the iteration box. I hope you like this video. If you have, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.